an ayahuasca journey, sent in by a subscriber. There are a lot of different places I could start about why I wanted to take ayahuasca, but the place I feel is more suitable is the fact that I didn't like where I was in my life. I didn't like myself. I had a severe depression that made me wish I had the courage to kill myself every day. I had a brain atrophy when I was born that affected 30% of my brain and was always told I had autism. The trouble was that once my brain recovered itself, I technically didn't have autism and this years of struggle with my identity ensued. I'd been going to therapy for almost two decades and I just felt that it wasn't right for me anymore. The trouble with going to therapy is that you learn to say what therapists want to hear and don't want to improve yourself. In comes ayahuasca. I'd heard about this sacred medicine for years, but never had the opportunity until the summer of 2021. I made it out all the way to Peru to be with Shipibo shamans. I went through the diet for about a month prior, and had the intention of getting to know myself, what my purpose was, say goodbye to my grandmother, who I never said goodbye to, and how I could be righteous and bring justice. This report in particular is about the second and last time I took ayahuasca. My intention was how I could be righteous, how I could bring justice. I felt an extremely strong calling to repeat this intention over and over again until I was called by the shaman to drink. I had a feeling this was the last day of being who I had been for all my life, so I said goodbye and drank. I sat in the darkness for a while when I felt the body high come on. I felt a slithering and rumbling in the pit of my stomach that vibrated throughout my body. The nausea set in. I thought to myself, of course out of everyone here, I'm going to be the first to vomit, to which I did, and as soon as I did, the noise of the jungle and everything around me went mute. All I could hear was the vomiting. I suddenly became very tired, and an entity with what looked like a baby mobile made of light came to me. He gently pushed my head up against the wall and floated the baby mobile made of light above me. It spiralled around me, again and again, going all over my body and making it vibrate at high frequency. As soon as it was done, the entity told me to look up, and so I did. What I saw was a row of stars shooting out into infinity. I was awestruck by how infinite the space was. There was no difference between opening my eyes or closing them. Then a voice told me if I was ready. Ready for what? I replied. An entity from the row of stars sucked their arm deep into my soul and took out my anxiety. I released a deep guttural inhale that scared the other participants around me. Different entities were taking things from my being. My negativity, my anxiety, my depression, my anger, all that wasn't serving me in life. This kept going on for what seemed like hours, with me repeatedly making deep guttural inhales and exhales. It turned from the entities taking things from my body and soul, to me taking in the pain of the universe and the other participants around me. I was sucking in the pain and exhaling it through my breath. Ayahuasca told me that I was to be a healer, and that will heal those I come across in life. Then it got frightening. My ego got in the way, and suddenly, time evaporated. I was stuck in the overwhelming feeling forever, and thought I'd done it. I've gone mad, and I'm never returning this time. But just as I was about to go insane forever, a hand tapped on my back. I opened my eyes to find a space filled with green smoke and a beautiful kind stranger sitting in front of me, with piercing blue eyes. His skin was as white as snow, and he was holding an orb made of soft red light. Are you okay? He asked, knowing my name. I nodded back, and he nodded back at me, telling me to focus on my breath. So I went back into it, focusing on my breath and coming back to myself. But as soon as I did, Mother Ayahuasca told me I had to die. What about my family? I asked her. She said they'll be fine, but that right now, I needed to die. So, 
I let go of all my family. But I asked, what about my friends? And she said they'll be fine as well. But I needed to die. And so, I let go of all of my friends. And then, I thought of my girlfriend at the time. Again, she said she would be fine. But right now, I needed to die. So then, I let go of her. And finally, I let go of everything that was me. I vomited everywhere. I spread the vomit all over myself and the bed that I was given. I threw the bucket away to signify that I couldn't cling on to anything at all. All my pain, my memories, my time, love, my likes, my dislikes, all of that disappeared. And I began to ascend to a space of sheer, unimaginable beauty and love. I was walking along the literal road of creation. It was made of stars, colours I had never seen before, and made of pure source energy. I was led to a space made of an infinity of pink lights. All who I knew were souls of people and beings that had passed on. I felt everyone who I knew had passed on. I danced with them and they celebrated that I arrived. I was the happiest I have ever been in my life. My fear of death completely vanished. Mother Ayahuasca came to get me. I didn't want to leave but she told me I had work to do back in the physical world. As we made it back to my body, she told me a couple of things. One was that I'd become a healer. More specifically, that my medicine would be mushrooms, and that I would need to work with this sacred medicine. She gave me tons of messages for all my friends and families, about who could take ayahuasca and who couldn't, and giving out other sacred medicines that could work better for them. When we almost reached my body, she called a spirit falcon to pluck something away from my brain. It flew away with my idea of whether I was autistic or not. You were just you. You didn't have to think you're one thing or another, she gently told me. And then she gently brought my spirit back to my body, and I was finally back in this reality. She said she would always be a part of me now, and that I cannot take ayahuasca ever again. She said that it would be too much medicine for me to take, and that the next time she would see me, was when I would finally release my physical form. I then finally came back to myself in this space. I felt a hand touch my left arm and I looked over to see my grandmother who passed away years before. I cried and thanked her for seeing me. She told me I never needed to say goodbye to her at all. With all of that, since that day, I haven't had depression, suicidal thoughts, or anxiety. I'm getting married to my girlfriend and I will never take ayahuasca ever again. As Mother Ayahuasca said, it would be too much medicine and I certainly received all the healing I've ever needed. Jeez, that's one of the very best reports I've ever had sent in. Um, if you're a, a long time viewer of the channel, I actually featured this over a year ago on 28th of January 2022. Um, I'm quite unhappy with how a lot of my early videos back then came out, came about. Uh, I didn't have the mic that I currently do now. Um, I, I didn't narrate as well, didn't enunciate stuff as uh, professionally. I really wanted to remake that video, um, sort out the audio levels and etc. And just really try and share this with more people. It didn't get a lot of views because it was just the early doors really of me creating reports so it's it's fair enough really. So yeah I'd really like to reshare this one because I know a lot of people have actually never watched it. Uh, so if you were watching this and thinking oh I swear I swear he's done this one before. Yeah I, I have done and actually when I was reading it halfway through I was like oh I have done this one before haven't I? And then I looked back thinking, oh, should I do a, a different report? Um, and then I rewatched the old video and thought, nah, nah, this is not up to snuff. Um, it's probably the one video I really want to remake after rewatching it. So here we are. Um, I also don't think the person who sent it, sent it in, uh, No Breville, actually saw my trip report at all. Uh, I literally just emailed him. I feel so bad. It's like over a year since um, I read this trip report and uploaded it and forgot to tell him. So, mate, I'm actually so sorry about that. But what an unbelievably beautiful experience. This is the epitome 
of a peak ayahuasca experience right here. It actually even inspires me to genuinely do it myself. I, I struggle with a lot of this stuff. Um, I really do struggle with an overthinking mind. Um, for years and years and years, I mean, one of the main reasons I take psychedelics, not just to pursue uh, spirituality and expand my consciousness, is just to sort of like escape the suffering of my own mind, which obviously can kick you in the ass. I mean, you can't always escape suffering. You've got to accept it and surrender yourself. Um, but it just would be nice if one day I could just <laughs> just go a day without overthinking everything because um, I do struggle with a lot of uh, lack of confidence. Um, and I've only just really realised just how much these trip reports and videos and just what I'm giving to you guys on here really means to you. I had a lot. Of, I put on my Instagram the other day about how I'm experiencing YouTube burnout. Um, I just feel like I'm going around in circles. I'm a bit of a one-trick pony, just doing these trip reports over and over. And I know what the predictable ones are going to get views. Um, it's going to be the ridiculous like 500 gram mushroom trip report. I don't know why people watch it. I mean, it's very entertaining. It's eye-catching. It's engaging. It's just really outlandish. And I mean, I, I, I'm I'm a victim to that too. I will click on uh, the more engaging titles. Um, so that's completely fair enough. But what I said on my Instagram is, is I'm going to take a bit of a break from trip reports. Um, maybe like one or two a week um, interspersed, with, interspersed with more just like psychedelic related videos philosophy and a big 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 video that I'm working on it's going to be like hours long and it's going to incorporate loads and loads of it's going to be like a compilation of trip reports combined with loads of information uh, personal anecdotes um, and just an, uh, an analysis of a certain topical thing I don't really want to spoil it but yeah um, I'm just going to incorporate everything I've done with the channel so far and make a really really big mega video because I know how much you guys like the longer videos um, and, and that's why I've been adding these commentaries I like to um, flesh them out um, obviously I know some people just stay for the trip reports and that's perfectly fine but uh, a lot of you guys really do seem to enjoy my uh, my thoughts and feelings regarding these um, experiences so yeah, this was uh, just just this one is just amazing because it just it highlights all the things you need to do. You need to be one hundred percent determined to do this. You can't just be like, oh well, yeah, I guess I'll go do ayahuasca and maybe it'll sort me out. It's like, mate, if you want to seriously sort yourself out, you've got to know that you want it, and you've got to be ready to let go of everything. And it's hard. It hard. It's hard. Like. I, I'd struggle with this, I'd let go of my family, my friends, um, if I had a significant other, just anything I love, like reality itself, the things I love about reality, that's so hard for the ego, just the human, in, just a human in general to actually let go, it's difficult, and it might take you a few tries, but eventually when it does happen, you just, you just bask in an ocean of infinite love, which is really beautiful. What I find about fascinating about ayahuasca, again, is this, uh, recurrence of the mother ayahuasca spirit that people call again let's not get into the bait of whether entities are real or not at the end of the day that's what you see you know don't matter whether it's real or not projecting the mind so much living being with its own consciousness don't matter what it is really to me um i'm not interested in the the semantics if that's the right word <laughs> uh, but i'm interested more in the fact that of the the common threads between all these ayahuasca experiences, this female presence is guiding um, the person um, through this spiritual experience and leaving them messages, leaving them, leaving them hints for their life, saying how this guy needs to use mushrooms to heal people. I've read so many ayahuasca reports where that is a big takeaway. It's like you have the healing energy, you have like the healing per personality. Even if you don't believe in like aura or energy or anything, say like the Myers Briggs personalities, uh, that's another good sort of. Um, scientific take on uh, different people's uh, again psyches certain personalities in the Myers-Briggs um, like uh, EN, EN FPs like uh, they're ideal for people who want to heal and um, spread that love and um, joy throughout the world and help people and, and that's sort of their path in life um, another interesting aspect of this was the sort of uh, famous Alan Watts uh, quote of uh, when you've got the message, hang up the phone. Um, but yeah, for some people that really is um, enough. To, an experience as powerful as this is enough just for them to like seriously get their life on track. You could always return to it in the future. I mean, that's what it, the calling is. When you feel the calling, um, it is best to um, realize why you're getting that calling and oftentimes acting upon it can even take you to greater levels of spiritual development. 
Um, but I don't think it is. Should, I've, I've said this before. I don't think it should be a rule for everyone to hang up the phone. Some people need to go further. Um, and if you contemplate deep within yourself, you'll know whether that's true for you or not. Because again, truth is um, the, the truth with a lowercase t. The relative truth is huh, subjective for everybody. You don't always have to pursue the uppercase T of truth, absolute truth. Um, everyone's on a different path, and that's the beauty of life, is that everyone's sort of realising love, realising infinity, realising God, or whatever you want to call it, source, in their own special way. Um, whether you believe in it or not, uh, is not is the point of life, not really to love deeper, love yourself deeper, love, love others. And the even deeper beauty of that is that are there any others? Is it all just the self? I like to think that is, and I like to think it's really beautiful. A lot of people get bogged down on this uh, solipsism thing, where it's like, oh, woe is me, I'm the only thing in existence. But again, like I've said before, we're so alone that we are ultimately together. And that is possibly the most wondrous, ecstatic revelation of all time that I've come to. And that so many people do when they take these psychedelics. It really is just insane how far that rabbit hole goes. I'm definitely feeling ready now in the next few years for my foray back into the deep, deep levels of consciousness. I want to start reporting more back myself, my revelations, my insights. Um, just doing my own trip reports. I know I keep saying I need to write them, but I am going to do it. Um, I just need to find some resources to be able to... Um, embark on these journeys if you know what I mean um, yeah so I'm going to work on that and come back with you with more uh, juicy insights into reality thanks once again to No Breville for sending this in, really sorry that it took me so long uh, to get to um, please if you see, I'll, I'll email you this and please uh, get in the comments and talk to people, one of the best things about receiving the subscriber trip reports and I'm, I'm sorry that, I, and I get so many emails and I'm genuinely sorry that um, I can't get round to them all. I do want to exp uh, send them all off um, into the YouTube ether. But I get so many um, that it is, it, I do get a bit bombarded. In the best possible way. I love the fact that I get so many messages. I mean, it's a blessing. I'm, I'm, I'm actually absolutely cherish every single email and piece of advice. But I get so many that I can't reply to all of them. But I do my best. Even if I don't reply to some of yours, just know that I've read it and I've taken it in. And even if you had a question and that, I'm sorry that I couldn't answer it. I do, I do, I do really try. But yeah, thanks guys. Um, you're all the best. You've been so supportive, especially everyone on my Instagram with me going through this sort of like creator burnout. But like I say, it's just a block in the road that I need to uh, overcome and that will allow me to uh, catalyze my creativity, creativity and make more engaging content um, reach a wider audience, grow further and spread the beautiful message of uh, love and psychedelics uh, and the spiritual journey for everyone and anyone who is a psycho or not. And even those who aren't, get them converted, get them on board, lad. Get up, the boys. <laughs> right. Cheers, guys. Hope you've had a great weekend and I'll see you this week.